Florida State and Georgia Tech in Ireland. About to get after it, Florida State favored by 11 and a half. People see that number like, whoa, a little bit steep. And Florida State returning production is 83rd in America. Is that, I understand they're playing the game in Ireland now, so it's, it's still, it still translates, even though they play the game in Ireland. How do we feel about this game? I'll break it down right now. Before we do that, though, make sure you are subscribed right here to the On3 YouTube channel. If you're a Florida State fan, you're a Georgia Tech fan, you're a Nebraska fan, you're an Ohio State fan, whatever team you root for, I promise you, it's college football. It's nothing but college football on this show. This is our first preview and prediction of the season. We will do a lot more throughout the course of this season. So make sure to dial in here, and we appreciate you for that. Florida State. New group, as I mentioned before, a lot of new faces, same mission. Same mission. And we, I've heard this talking point a few times, and I agree with it. There's an edge to this team. Because as much as a lot of those guys from last year's squad are gone, like I think there's still a feeling now internally about what happened on Selection Sunday last year. You go undefeated, you win the ACC, and you're left out of the college football playoff. Whether it's real or not, there is some very... Uh, very uh, disrespected feelings, I think, within that locker room, and they have a point to prove in 2024. Now, for Georgia Tech, they're one of those teams in the ACC that we talk about as like a killer whale in the conference. And what I mean by that is like they're one of those teams that they're not the Miamis, they're not the Florida States, they're not the Clemsons of the conference, but they could very well end up breaching, have a couple things break their way, and have the season they want to have and then end up playing for the ACC. So it's week zero that would obviously have to start in this game, but... Georgia Tech now not to be truffled with, to quote Michael Scott. The matchup to watch here that will determine the football game, as it does every football game, but especially in this one, is in the trenches. Because Florida State, they want to get DJU comfortable. First time playing quarterback Florida State, first time in a new offense. It's not a home game. It's, I mean, probably everyone's feeling a little bit of the travel here. They want to make sure that they allow the game to come to him. The other part of that is this is who Florida State is going to be in 2024. We've said it many times. It will not be a 50-50 style of offense for Florida State run to pass. It will be, I think, a lot closer to like 57% to 60% run for Florida State. And, I mean, why not? Like, if that's who you're going to be, lean into your strengths. Lean into your offensive line that's experienced. Lean into your stable of backs that I said a couple of shows ago was three deep, and someone in the comment section said, no, nah, J.D., we're four or five deep. More power to you. Give the ball to Roy Dell Williams. Give the ball to Keziah Holmes. Give the ball to Toa Feely. Like, let those dudes eat. That's going to be a big part of this whole approach for Florida State. We'll talk about the prize picks numbers here when those uh, become available, but I would take a very close look at some of the more rushing yards for those guys. Georgia Tech, the concern I have for them is can they stop the run? Because they allowed five yards of carry in 2023. If they allow five yards of carry... In this game, Florida State will cover, and they will cover with ease. Okay, now Georgia Tech understands some of those uh, things they lacked in 2023. They will uh, have a different-looking front seven. They pulled in seven guys from the front seven to contribute in 2024. And the spread's 11.5, so it's double-digit spread. And on this show, whenever we break down a game like this, it's, I mean, the spread is what it is for a reason, right? Like, you don't have to really look too hard to predict a Florida State win so are we picking Florida State to win the football game we'll tell you that in a second but I think the path for Georgia Tech to win the football game is potentially one worth exploring I think that Georgia Tech winning this game would require two things happening one is the Georgia Tech diversity in the run game would have to hit in a big way okay Jamal Haynes is a back that had right around a thousand yards last year for Georgia Tech in this offense, they will get downhill. Like, they will do a lot of zone run schemes. The reason why that's important, man on man, I don't think that Florida State is going to have any issue with Georgia Tech's offensive line. Like, you're not blocking them straight up. However, in the zone run game, it's a lot more about displacement than domination. Like, can I get my guy a little bit of daylight as opposed to can I get a pancake block is your thought process as an offensive lineman. If that can hit and they can hit maybe underneath the Patrick Payton, maybe outside of Marvin Jones, maybe underneath the Daryl Jackson. Like if all those things can happen, maybe Georgia Tech gets some tempo. Maybe they get some rhythm. And speaking to the diversity of the run game, 
the zone run scheme is one part of this, but also something we got to factor in here, which kind of goes into the other point, is like Haynes King. He's going to be a factor running the football for you. Like, if you don't think he's a problem for you running the football, like, give him some daylight. He'll, he'll take it 40 on you, no problem. His mobility is one part of this in the run game, but even more specifically, the second point I want to make here is what he could do when the play breaks down and keeping his eyes downfield, that's where things get a little bit hairy. Because, again, I think that man-to-man, Florida State's defensive line will not have issues. Like, Patrick Payton will get his. Marvin Jones will get his. They will make quick work of this offensive line. However, if you don't get home on Haynes King and he rolls out, there is a true sophomore receiver for Georgia Tech by the name of Eric Singleton Jr. He averaged 15 yards reception last year. He is a force, okay? He, he will hurt you if you don't get to Haynes King and it becomes backyard football and he gets behind the coverage and then you're listening to Georgia Tech's band. Like that could be the way that things go in Ireland. The, the ideal game flow for Georgia Tech to win this football game would be they obviously, like if they can create a turnover and more power to you, more realistically, you are able to strike first, be able to get a stop, stretch it to 10, maybe stretch it to 14. And before you know it, like in the first quarter, we're like, hang on a second. Like Florida State may not be able to just sit back there and pound the rock to win this game. Like they might actually have to answer some scores through the air here, kind of try and try to find a way to get back into this game a little bit quicker. If that's the case, and you try to get DJU a little bit more involved in this game, if you're Georgia Tech, I'm not telling you you win the football game, but I think that's maybe the path to Georgia Tech making this thing interesting. Now, even with all that being said, I still believe that the physicality of Florida State, both offensively and defensively, is going to be too much for Georgia Tech. I think it's fine if you don't trust DJU going into this thing, but again, he's not going to be the centerpiece of Florida State's offense. Like, even in this first game, it's going to be a lot of Roy Dell Williams. It's going to be a lot of uh, Keziah Holmes, all those names I just mentioned. And then when they creep up, play action, over the top, Malik Benson, touchdown. That's going to be the formula. That's going to be the rhythm. So I think the perfect stat line if you're DJU is like, all right, let's go be like 12 for, for 22, uh, 196 yards, two touchdowns. Like that could be the kind of day he has, and it could be more than good enough to win the football game. Haynes King has to take care of the football for Georgia Tech. He threw 16 picks a year ago. This has been something that has followed Haynes King since he was at A&M. And it's not every game, but, but when, when it rains, it pours with him. He had multiple games last year of multiple interceptions. Shaheem Brown, I think, could be the, the differentiator for this defense for Florida State. He's a safety for them, had a phenomenal camp for the Knowles. His ability to play the run and the pass is going to be, I think, nightmarish for Georgia Tech's defense, or for Georgia Tech's offense, rather. Too much team speed for, for Georgia Tech. I really like Florida State to win the game, but here's where it gets interesting. The question we're all asking, does Florida State cover? Because 11 and a half, kind of a lot of points for a team that maybe the college football public doesn't know a ton about right now. Haynes King could hurt you. Like, is it good Haynes or bad Haynes? We don't know. They got some offensive weapons. Is the defense improved? All those question marks are fair. Here's what I'll say. This game, to me, just screams backdoor cover for Florida State. Some of it's a feeling. Some of it's on the ground game. I think Florida State will punch one in to really put things on ice a little bit later in the game. I got Florida State winning. I got Florida State covering. Again, backdoor. I have the final score as 27-13 for the Knowles. Start undefeated in the college football season. Start undefeated in ACC play. And uh, start undefeated on uh, international soil in 2024. Hey, y'all, thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also, be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.